Hey, what's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday. Um, as I'm just finishing this project I'm doing, I thought maybe some people might be interested in kind of the process that I use and um, just how I've created the home studio out of what I've got and not a lot of expertise doing this. <laughs> but um, let me flip the camera around here. So I usually have this table all set up with my DAW computer um you know and everything running to my interface my array and then here's my ead module and you can see how all three of those are blinking is because i just bypass them all so that way i'm only getting the um, microphones of it and all you have to do is just go to each one like trigger press bypass go to exit and go to effect and then press bypass and then exit and you'll see you know, now they're coming, the lights are coming back on. So if you do that, bypass, then they'll blink, exit, and then we go to trigger, and then we go bypass. Now they're all three blinking, so we know that we're just working with the mics. Then you have uh, your master control right here, but then that also feeds into here where you can alter um, that. So this interface is kind of um, weird just because uh, one and two are in the front and then all the other inputs are in the back. Um, but it's just a Behringer, um, you know, not too expensive, but it does the job very nicely. Um, and it's got high uh, sample rate and, you, you know, customize a lot of different things. And we had eight channels and then we realized, you know what, eight's probably not going to be enough because that's going to be... Uh, all taken up by the drum array so then Jay and I got an ADAT extension so it's just optical extension that plugs into that so it gives you another eight channels that are all um, you know um, synced up with the uh, Behringer interface and then it's literally just one cable going here and I have my um, DAW and recording and everything over here because I'm having to reach the computer from over there and this is as far as my cable will reach without you know pulling or disrupting that and that's my entire control mechanism for the whole thing so um that's kind of my process and then you know obviously i've got all these different things just because i had the mapex was all mic'd up and then i took everything and had to use some extensions and that kind of stuff to get whoa to get enough um length on everything and make sure nothing was uh getting too tied up so it does kind of look like a mess but it's all uh configured and i've got my left and right overheads and then the ead is also stereo so it's a left and right um, customizable condensers and then when you're using it just as the mic array then you don't get any extra low end trigger but that is cool to have because you can, with that EAD, you can choose so many different sounds out of it and make your kit sound like an electric kit. Um, and it has the timbre of your drums and then it puts a digital signal processing on the microphone signal. So it picks up your drum sound, the natural timbre of your drums, but then it puts on that effect on top of what the sound of your drums already are, if that makes sense. So it just... A uh, great little device because I mean there's so many different useful aspects with it playing live practicing it has a whole app just for doing covers and it syncs up with an iPad or with a smartphone or whatever it has an app and then it automatically syncs it records your drum part through its microphones while playing the cover part of it through the module and you can plug in a usb stick and load any songs you want into it and then from that app it automatically uploads it to youtube from your microphone array so um you know i don't really use that feature too much just because i don't know i'm more of a fan of just turning the amps on and blasting tunes and, and playing to them um in a live context just kind of uh, you know, jumping right into it, um, and seeing, you know, different tunes. So anyway, got my DAW there. I've got one, you can see I'm using my floor toms as my stands 
and I better fix this computer before it gets any more sideways. But that way I have um, all my files and stuff running through here. Um, and then I can play, I can import any tracks there. Then I have, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, microphones. Um, I know that sounds like a lot, but it, I, it's because I got the hat. Then I have two for the snare. So top and bottom snare. And then in the kick, I have a Beta 91A. In my opinion, those are the best bass drum mics out. And you can see that I put the uh, Evans EQ pillow with the side actually touching the batter head just to get more of that punch in low end but less less tone for that just so it's kind of a fat sound. Um, and then I just put two dots on here just because the sustain is just so incredible with this floor tom. And that's with two dots on it. And this, <laughs> I got uh, trying different things out, but I've got these moon gels here. They're not really actually touching the head. They're kind. Of, they're keeping two rings. I have two separate rings, and they're kind of bent and wrinkled in places um, and stick up. You know, like they have folds in them and don't really touch the head much. So I'm using those just to kind of hold them down and hold them together um, to get that sound and um, still have that kind of rock um, old school vintage sound with the wood hoops but I cranked it up pretty high so it's still you know got a good snap and pop to it um, so yeah that's kind of my process that's my array <laughs> and then you can see I'm using drums for my stands for uh, where I'm putting stuff um, and then I'm doing two different angles, um, and this is my first time trying two different angles with two different devices and trying to sync everything up. So, uh, you know, it's uh, we'll see how that works out in post, but I, I think I did it right, so um, we'll see. But that's kind of my process, and then that way I have two different stereo, um, you know, overhead stereo plus sound captured from the middle of the kit stereo. Um, and this is cool too because it also acts as kind of a cymbal uh, microphone. And then also it captures, you know, it's right next to the shell of all the drums. So, which is cool because it captures this kind of, uh, you know, interesting sound that's coming more of the uh, resonance out of the shell rather than like directly under the head kind of thing but it's kind of like back in the day you know how they just would have one or two microphones in the center of the kit maybe like one over here for the you know snare and hat and then one over here um for the rest and then sometimes they only use one microphone it was mono you know so it's kind of cool because uh, that way you're getting the sound from the center of the kit and then also um, up here. Oh, and then I also have a room mic too. So maybe that makes 11 mics. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but uh, that way I have the room mic, which is an Audix um, T, uh, TR40, which is like a test and measurement mic, but it also works great for um, just a room mic because it's Omni. So, um, it's, man, is it powerful? It's like, it's very, very sensitive, very sensitive. So that's kind of my process. And then going through all these different rings I have and trying different sounds and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it. And I think this kit, man, does not only does it look just beautiful, it, but it's a great sounding kit, man. It is just I really have fallen in love with this kit. And then this, uh, the snare actually looks good with it too. I like the, how the snare looks. And yeah, you know, wood hoops are a whole different kind of animal. But, you know, if you want that sound or need that sound for something, it's good to have. You know, that's kind of my philosophy is it's always better to have and take away 
than to get something what, that can't do it in the first place, if you know what I mean. You know, like getting getting a snare that has tons of ring, tons of overtones, tons and tons of options of, like, uh, you know, that's I'm talking about this brass drum. Or you can just make it sound like a, a fat rock um, snare, you know, with, with hardly any overtones. So that's my philosophy is what I mean is it's better to have something like this that can do those things than you can muffle them and take them away and tune in certain ways that will make the drum sound that way than to, you know, have a real cheapo, like, this is my 12-inch uh, snare from the Academy. It's like a SLP. Uh, it doesn't even have a head on top. It's got the screws in there. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a really cheap snare, and it was just used at the Academy. So that's the only 12, and that's the other wood one I have. Um, besides this DW. Now this DW is something else. I love this snare so much. I absolutely love this snare. I, I'm really torn between using this one and the Tom SLP, but this drum just has the, a, such a low, like it hits you in the chest. It really does. Like, you know, the bass drum hits you in the gut, and when you, when you strike this snare, it hits you in the chest. It's got a deep fundamental to it, like, you know, a fat sound. So it's a perfect, right? you know, you just have to kind of tune it the right way or muffle it the right way, that kind of thing. Um, but I think, the, you know, I made the right decision using that one. So anyway, guys, I uh, just wanted to kind of go through my rundown. And I know it looks crazy and messy and that kind of stuff, but I had to figure out how to get <laughs> my array that was, you know, all the links were meant to go to this kit, so they didn't have to go far. You know, they only had to go from here to here. And then now I had to go from here all the way over to there. So you can imagine uh, having to reroute that and figure that out. Um, and then in addition, um, you know, these clips don't work for the wood hoops. So they do kind of on the edge but they still slip and fall off. They're not very secure. So, you know, better to just go with the boom. That's what I did. Boom, boom, we've got a boom. So, got one boom there, and then I've got another one. This is actually, you know, a kick, uh, kick mic stand, and I use that as my bottom. So I have two KSMs, KSM 141 Shures, um, both on the snare, and then the Beta 91A uh, as my kick mic. I usually use one of the KSMs and the Beta 91A, so that way I'm getting like just an instrument mic sound and, and the slap of the uh, beater against the head. Um, but with this, the, I've already done some tests, and, and that Beta 91A is just perfect for the sound of that. And I really need the snare to be, you know, um, very prominent. And it's really the main voice in the whole tune. Like there's, there's, there's actually no, no toms at all. Um, she's not, she, all she's playing with is, is a two piece kit. So she's got a bass and a snare drum, um, you know, and then her hi hat and, and a ride. So if you want to count those as pieces, then four pieces, but she only has two drums. So, um, there really aren't any parts that include the toms, but, you know, it's kind of fun to add your own things to different tunes and um, have fun doing that. But anyway, that's kind of my array. And then uh, now it's cool because I have enough microphones for each drum before I kind of had to like share one microphone for two toms or, you know, that kind of stuff. But what I did is I went to um, this music store that I'm actually, um, uh, I might be working at soon. Um, and I went and picked this up, which is just a SM57 knockoff. So it's a EV. Um, but it's actually, it, it works well. So it's, uh, trying to get this to focus. I don't know why it won't. Oh, there we go. Cobalt. So, it's beefy. 
and uh, it works. It works well. So it's basically my knockoff version of a SM57. So now I have enough mics for, for when I have um, all my toms on my Mapex. But anyway, just kind of wanted to show the, the setup and what my process is and how I link all this stuff together and the different devices I use, the reasons why, um, you know, and then just showing kind of what I created here for this um, project that I'm doing. So um, love you guys and happy drumming, happy recording. And, um, man, I'm so grateful for all of you. You guys really helped me out. And uh, this kit sounds as good as it does because of your guys' help. So um, I really appreciate that. And, man, you should hear it recorded. It's unbelievable through the DAW. It sounds like, I mean, it sounds like a pro kit. It sounds like a kit you would hear in a pro track. I mean, it's, it really does. It's, it's amazing how well it sounds uh, recorded. So, you know, because of the dimensions and that stuff when you're just playing live and that, but that's why I love the EAD because all you have to do is put the EAD on, turn the amp on and boom, you're mic'd. So it's, it's a really worthwhile investment. If, if anyone, you know, I, I know a lot of guys already have great, uh, recording setups and gear and all that, but the EAD is, is really versatile in a lot of ways, not just for recording, but like I said, for practicing, for playing live, you can plug it into whatever interface and PA system that's at, um, you know, whatever house system or gig that you're playing at. Um, you can always just kind of keep it with you in case the band leader asks, hey, hey, that's, can you mic it so it's a little bit louder? Um, that kind of stuff. It's great to be able to just take one box with you. That's all you have to do. <laughs> you know, you just take one box. What I do is, you know, I just have my in-ears in, and then I have an extra long extension cable for my headphones. Just plug my phones in and uh, start playing with the DAW, and then it records all my parts um, through that, you know, and you can choose click or not. I mean, it's it's a full uh, setup and, and, you know, professional... <laughs> Um, system because all I'm doing is capturing the wave files and it does that beautifully so you know um, editing wise and all that I know I'm it's probably I'm kind of frowned upon because I'm using you know Behringer and uh, traction um, that came with the Behringer but traction actually works well and it's pretty powerful software and then what I can do is just send any mp4 or wave file to Jay, um, who has Pro Tools, or other people that have Pro Tools, um, Eric has it has uh, Logic or Lo you know Logic Pro or Pro Tools, um, and then that way they can do any mixing or if they want to adjust different things, um, then you know that's totally possible. So it's uh, it's kind of cool. So um, you know you don't really have to have like top of the line software just to record your parts. Because as long as your sample rate's good, you're, you know, at, I guess 48K or whatever it is, um, which reminds me, I should make sure that I'm at all those settings. But, um, yeah, so, um, but it's great to uh, be able to do that and then just, you know, use this, then send them through Dropbox or Google Drive or wherever, whatever. Um, whatever works and then they get the wave file they can match it up to whatever they're doing as long as we're playing to a common pulse <laughs> um, you know and so we usually choose a, a click to go along with the tune um, and then that's kind of how we go about it and then sync it up and uh, there we go so I'm so grateful that I have these amazing friends that know how to do that editing and the video editing because I'm just starting to figure that stuff out. And it's so funny too, because just drums, um, we're probably going to do something together. I don't want to give anything away. So I guess I kind of did, but, um, you know, down, down the line. And, um, I asked him, I'm like, well, can you do the video editing? Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So just point being like, you know, a 12, 13 year old kid, I'm not sure exactly how old you are. I think you're 12 years old, buddy. Um, 
you know, is doing the video editing for us. So um, I need to get my, my act together, my game together with the video editing aspect. But I'm just more focused on sound, you know. I'm always focused on the sound. And um, in my playing, is my playing even and, and consistent and that kind of stuff. So as long as I get a good um, recording into the DAW and, uh, you know, mi I do mix it myself a little bit. Um, so I just use the mixer that's in there and adjust the level so everything blends well. Because um, sometimes the bass drum will be super loud or the snare or whatever. And um, so I kind of adjust those levels as I'm going through it. And then... Um, to then just send that to, to whomever. And then, you know, you can go back and forth, change things, um, edit things, that kind of stuff. But it's fun to be able to do. So, you know, it's it's just... Uh, also, if anyone's ever interested in doing a collaboration with me, I'd love to. I, I really enjoy doing these. And, um, you know, it kind of... It gives me uh, not just something to do, but it gives me uh, really good you know, motivation and, and practice and, and playing with others and that sense of joy, um, you know, and all those different things that are cool and, and, and playing with others and call and response and um, just jamming out, you know, even though we might be far apart through distance, we're still able to keep all this stuff together through, through uh, you know, online and, and our channels and that kind of stuff. And that's why I love this community so much. So, Thank you guys and just wanted to kind of show you my process. So have a great rest of your day and uh, happy Sunday and God bless. Take care and have a great week ahead. Bye. Happy drumming.